Let's start off. I'm Gautam. I handle marketing for Zoho Survey. And the topic of my presentation will be getting the most out of your customer feedback. So to get started, let me be frank here. Everyone hates surveys. Not something I should be saying as a product marketer of Zoho Survey, but it's true. Something that all marketers have to deal with at some point of time or another. So why do we hate them? Surveys these days are too long. They go up to like 170 questions. That was one of the surveys that I came across. They're poorly designed. I mean, half the time, I don't know what the questioner is asking me. Their words just don't make sense. The options are poorly worded. It doesn't make sense at all to me. And finally, the worst of all sense, I get no reaction. I don't know how my, me giving the survey actually helps me. So all of this results in low response rates, leading to both marketers and the respondents feeling the same way about surveys, everyone hating them. But this is not how it's supposed to be, right? When I was first introduced to survey, I was given a lot of promises. I was told that it would engage my customers. I was told that it would extract meaningful information from them, that I would get meaningful feedback from my customers it would help me improve my product and services rapidly. And at the end of the day, something that we all work for, exceed customer expectations. And with this promise is what, you know, we end up with low response rates, which just destroys all of this. So my whole presentation is designed around this idea. How do you improve your surveys? So there are two tips to quality surveys. Personalize it and humanize it. So a few confused faces over there in the audience. Let me explain. Consider yourself going in a meeting with an important client, right? You're going in a meeting with an important client, and you wouldn't act like a robot, would you? You wouldn't interrupt him before he finishes his sentence. You would actually try to make a connection with him. You would listen to him. You would nod at his answers. You would give meaningful, you know, a meaningful feedback to them. That's what a survey is supposed to do. And that's what I'm going to talk about this. How to personalize your survey and how to humanize your survey. Let's start with personalizing options. You could present visually stunning surveys. You could brand your surveys. And you can host it on your own domain. Now, this is where I'm going to tell you how Zoho Survey helps you do all of this. Now, Zoho Survey has a list of pleasing, uh, a lot of templates on there. You just go to your uh, survey account, and you see that there are a lot of, there's a template section specifically given to you to design visually stunning surveys. So the ones on the top that you see, it's just an example. There are a lot more. And the ones on the top that you see are fully customizable in the sense that you can customize the font, the font spacing, you know, the line spacing. If you want to change the color, you can do it. Each font can be changed in color anything to suit you. And the one in the bottom is something you know, partially customizable. So these are the two kinds of survey that we provide, themes that we provide. So in the end, you present visually stunning or visually pleasing surveys. Why would you do that? Again, to take the analogy of you meeting an important client, you wouldn't go and meet him in shorts. You wouldn't go there not wearing deodorant. It's the same idea over here. You should make it more visually appealing. A survey which looks extremely boring doesn't get responses at all. What next? Branding your surveys. Put your logo on top there. It's available again in Zoho Survey. In the settings section of Zoho Survey, you can actually replace the default logo. The default logo is the Zoho Survey logo. You can replace it with your own inner logo. And again, over here, in tandem with what I mentioned before, put in your brand colors. Every brand has its own color. Every brand has its own recognition. Put them in. And finally, host it on your own domain. Something unique to Zoho Survey. I mean, you can see every other survey too out there. And this is not available. You can host your surveys on your own domain. And why wouldn't you? I mean, it is your survey after all. Now look at how we can humanize it. Two things I mentioned over here. Establishing context to your questions 
and avoiding asking unnecessary questions. So I'll give you a demo on both of them. So I've created a demo survey over here. This is what it looks when published. And how do you rate your experience with Zorlix? Nine out of 10. So you see what appeared right there. We are thrilled to hear that you like our product, or rather our event. Could you tell us your reasons for your rating? I can enter my reasons over here. But at the same time, see what happens when I reduce it to one. We are sorry to hear that. Could you please tell us why we, where we need to improve? It's a simple nod. It's nothing more. It's a simple nod to your, uh, you know, to your respondent saying that, yes, I'm actually listening to you. That helps a lot. Now, over here, who was your favorite presenter in Zoalix 2015? Uh, Sridhar. OK, over here. See what pops up over there? What do you like best about Sridhar's presentation? Simple things. The answer from the previous question is just put up in the next question. How do I do that? Now, when I go to the builder over here, see, this is the edit editor over here. As I mentioned before, the themes tab is over here, where you can see that I can customize the themes over here. Click on the customize theme option, and you can customize everything over here. Meanwhile, getting back to this, the satisfaction page, you see that I put the question, how would you rate your experience with Zolly? Is it visible to everyone over here, even in the back? Visible? Yeah, thank you. So there are three options, there are three different questions I've listed over here. We are sorry to hear that. Thank you for your response. We are thrilled to hear that. And down here, I mentioned something called question logic. And here I see add question logic. So when I edit it, look at what happens here. It's the same if then concept. If, how would you rate your experience with Zoha Lix is less than seven, show the question. And I will, sorry to hear that. You get the picture? Does anyone have any doubts over here? So if and then, simple. So you set up the question logic over here, and you save, and it reflects over here. Now, what else? You saw the uh, question on who was your favorite presenter in Zoalix 2015. And you see a funny thing over there. What do you like best about dollar sign Q minus F what is that? So let me explain that. I'm going to the edit option over here. So there is something called insert variable. All right? Insert variable. So th these are something, uh, you can see that email address. How would you rate? And when I scroll down, you can see that all the questions are there. What you can do over here is that, for example, I click over here. You can see the dollar Q minus F. What does it stand for? It says that the answer to the question F the question that you've selected will be replacing that section. So I'm just showing a slide demo over here. Save. Now over here, I'm refreshing it. Who's your favorite presenter? I'm going to enter Sridhar and see what happened. What do you like best about Sridhar's presentation? It says Sridhar again. You see what has happened over there. That's exactly how it works out. So that is one more. Uh, the next one is avoiding, avoid asking unnecessary question. So what do I mean by that? For example, you are in your CRM database and you're sending out your, uh, you know, your campaigns to a number of people. Okay, you're sending it out to 100 different people and you have all their email addresses. Would it make sense to you to ask, put a section there asking their email address again? Absolutely not, right? No, you wouldn't ask their email address again. If you know their name, you wouldn't ask their name again. So what I've done over here is that you see that URL on top. I'm going to put question mark email is equal to victor at zohocorp.com. Sorry, dot com. So it's gone to a separate link over here. You know how this treat? I'm going to show you how it gets treated. So the reports is top over here. Your users won't know that, that such a section is there, such a variable has been put in. We call it custom variable. The users won't know that such a variable has been put in, but when they answer on that particular URL, it shows up as C1. You see, custom variable one, and I'm showing the three responses, and it shows up for you in the reports. 
I'm going to show you on live. So I'm going to put nine with real to hero product. I'm just going to put test over here because it saves me time. I'm going to put Sridhar over here. And I'm going to put test over here just to save me time. Now, once I submit it, thanks for taking the survey. Oh, by the way, you can customize this page too as you're liking. And I'm going back over here, refreshing it. And you see that in the email address column, it says victor at zohocorp.com. So I haven't asked anyone about that. It just shows up. So how do I do that particular thing? So I'm going to Zoho survey again, the edit section. In advanced options over here, there is a section called custom variable. All right, custom variable in the advanced option section. You can see here that I've already set a variable name as email. So I'm going to do something else, variable name as name, right? Variable name as first name. Variable type is text, save. So I've added a custom variable over there. So in your URL, uh, let me just go to deploy. The, this is the web link that I have. So I'm going to publish it once more. You can see it over here. So in the URL, I'm going to put in something called name is equal to Gautam, right? So nine, uh, sorry, test, test, and test. So when I submit it over here, I'm going to refresh the report here right again. And you can see that custom variable has popped up, but still, you get the picture of what happens over there. It works really fine with uh, email. So avoid asking unnecessary questions. You can ask your email address or anything along those lines. That's about humanizing your survey. Next, collaboration. So we've seen about uh, personalizing and humanizing your survey, but that's not all Zoho Survey is about. We are a cloud business company, and it's sort of a rule here that we have to you know, encourage collaboration on the cloud. So we can invite reviewers to review your content. You can share your surveys and reports. You can export your reports to your Google Drive. That in, you can view it on your Google Sheet. You can transfer your surveys. And there's something called portals. I'm going to go through this one by one. Invite reviewers. You can see this is the menu that, you can, uh, that is visible within the survey. So reviewer, you can add a reviewer, and you can set the amount of time that they can review. What reviewers can do is that they can come to your survey. They cannot edit it in any way. But they can put in comments saying that, yes, this looks good. No, this looks bad. And this is a screenshot of what is happening. So I have put it like questions. May, this question may be clearer. And the respondent is like, do you have a suggestion? The creator of the survey would be, do you have a suggestion? That is one way. And the second way that we actually encourage collaboration would be sharing surveys and reports. So we've put it, uh, you know, we've separated this. You can share your survey with someone by which they can actually edit your survey and publish it. And the other thing is sharing your reports where you simply show them the final product or what has happened within the survey. So again, it's the same thing. You just put in your collaborator's name and share it, done. And next is the Google Drive options. You have an option to export your reports again. We understand that not everyone, we have an option to ex uh, export it to Zoho Sheet as well. But preferably, many people that you've seen prefer it to be exported to Google Drive. So you can export it to Google Drive. And it is an instantaneous update. So you don't need to keep doing it over and over again. As long as it's integrated, it's quite instantaneous. Portals. Again, it's a unique feature for Zoho Survey, which is not available in any other survey tool. So you must be aware of the concept called workspaces. It's similar to that. What happens is I'm going to give you a use case over here. So consider yourself to be a very large organization, even a medium-sized organization. And there are various themes. There's a support team, there's a marketing team, and each of them have a different set of surveys to send. So in an organization, it, it would seem ridiculous to have it all in one location, right? So what we have done is separated it into portals. So your support team will have a support portal. Only the support surveys can be viewed. 
for your marketing team, it'll be the marketing portal where they can view only the marketing, uh, you know, marketing surveys. It helps you with better organization across your uh, organization again. So to recap, you should personalize it, you should humanize it, and you should consider collaborating with Zoho Survey.